the tool of asking the right questions. It goes by a lot of different names, right? Um, sometimes it can be called reframing. Sometimes it can be called a, me a metacognition meditation. There's too many M's there to make it a tongue twister. <laughs> so I just like calling it asking the right questions. Am I asking myself the right questions? And more importantly, not just if I'm questioning myself, but if I'm stuck in a negative loop, do I need to stop and reframe it into a question that is an appropriate and right question? Because that's a lot of times when it comes to the negative talk, self-talk and loops that we get ourselves stuck in, it's because we're asking our brain to do something that it doesn't do, right? Whether you know it or not, you are an intelligent, creative, problem-solving supercomputer. That's your DNA. That is what has gotten us to this point. The fact that our lineage were tough, creative problem solvers. They were adapting and overcoming constantly problems to move forward, not just so they could have a good time, but for simple survival. And the reality is most people um, don't do a lot of problem solving with their brain. And so their brain kind of turns in on itself and starts creating problems to try to figure out. But then we create these worst case scenarios and then we set the equation up in such a way that there's no way that there, we can find a solution. Our brain can find a solution, right? And so what do we do about asking the right questions? Well, I, the first thing that we need to do is get in the habit of checking in with our cognition and our metacognition and what's going on. And that's why the, having a practice of the day um, is, is wonderful. You know, if you've gone through and you've already done the practice of the day, the playlist, you know, they're not supposed to be deep, super, you know, take you to the, the next level of, um, you know, Jedi-ness, levitation, mind power. It's, they're really all about just this, asking the right question about, are you aware of where your thinking is? And are you using it in a way to create the directed growth that you want in your life? Or are you being hijacked by thoughts and processes that you're not even aware of and in control of? And so that's what the practice of the day does. Watching the video or listening to me simply is a primer, is a way to help get you there. You can do it on your own. And sometimes it's as simple as looking at that little JPEG on your phone that says, Joby's toolbox, <laughs> ask the right question. Oh, this is what I need to do. Why am I in this funk? What assumptions am I making about this situation that are maybe true, maybe false? Am I getting a little bit too strict of a definition? Can I broaden my perspective, my horizon? Um, what am I truly responsible for in this situation? Am I putting, taking on more responsibility for the situation than I need to be? And is this really somebody else's problem or thing that they need to be actionable to do on? See, that's the thing. Our brain doesn't know. We've just somewhere along the line, we labeled it so our, as, as something that needs to be attending to, something that's a threat. So our brain jumps on it and gets going. So probably the biggest thing that you can do when you're dealing with negative self-talk is to ask yourself, how can I reframe this into a problem question with a solution, right? Instead of just having some general, oh, this is bad, or this isn't good, or I wish things were different, sort of fretting that what you've got going on, how can you reframe it into a specific problem that then your brain, because that's what your brain wants to do, it's looking for a problem to grab onto that it can figure out a solution for. And if you frame it in a problem, solution-oriented question, then your brain gets a chance to go and figure it out. So instead of just saying, oh, I'm so depressed um, about X, well, what specifically are you depressed about? What specifically can you change or do? I'm depressed because I don't have a job or my job is threatened. Okay, so how do I reframe that 
um, anxiety, that threat, that negativity into a problem solution? Well, I ask myself the, the next question. Why do I even care if my, my job is under threat? Okay, because I won't have any money and my family won't eat or I won't be able to pay my rent or my mortgage. Okay, so that's the real threat. That's the real problem. So the real problem is how am I going to generate revenue? Well, now that gives my brain something entirely different to focus on. Now I, it's going to be back there spinning its wheels and going, oh, how can I create revenue? Oh, I could do this. I could do that. I could go back to doing this. I could try this. I could ask this person. I could do that thing. Now that changes our framework simply by asking the right question as opposed to why me, why now, why this, or just simply focusing on a negative outcome that we don't like, we reframe everything into a solution-oriented problem. The problem's still there. I'm not saying think pie in the sky or don't think about your problem. What I'm saying is reframe that problem, that negativity, into a solution-oriented question that then is going to allow your brain to do what it was designed for, to do what it's evolved for, to do what everyone prior to you in your lineage has been doing and using it as a creative problem solving machine. So instead of that brain being your worst nightmare and you can't get out of here, it opens up and it opens up lots of worlds and possibilities and solutions. So asking the right questions is all about checking in with your self-talk and making sure again that it's your self-talk. You get to decide what it wants to be and reframing it in a way that creates that directed growth that you're searching for in your life.